You're watching the Wellness Hour, news that makes you healthier. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, replacing missing teeth with dental implants. According to my first guest, he says nobody should be wearing a loose-fitting denture. He is Oklahoma's premier center for implant dentistry. With us, we have board-certified oral surgeon, Dr. Perry Brooks. Dr. Brooks, welcome to the program. Well, thank you, Randy. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, I know you brought a lot of photos, so we'll try to get to as many of those as possible. But for people that don't know your practice, who's the typical dental implant patient these days? Well, Randy, our, our typical patient is either a patient that has a lot of bad breath or cavities or gum disease, someone who's leading toward or going toward a denture, or those who have been wearing dentures for years. And then the last patient would be one that may be single implants or they're missing a tooth or have a problem that needs to be replaced. That's a pretty typical patient of ours. At the top of the show, we said no more dentures. Are there a lot of people in Oklahoma wearing a denture, like upper lower denture? Absolutely, Randy. There's about uh, 4 million people in Oklahoma, and uh, out of that, there's about uh, 600,000 people over the age 50. Of that number, you can fill the University of Oklahoma football uh, stadium with at least uh, two or three stadiums full, uh, the amount of people who have uh, either uh, dentures or wearing dentures or are about to go into dentures because of failing teeth. Is that right? Well, if it's so good, look, if getting a brand new set of teeth that don't come in and out if implants are so good, why aren't they all doing it? What's your take? Randy, there's multiple different uh, scenarios for patients. There's the patient that, um, that's already in a denture and they've been in it for seven, eight, nine, ten years or going on that plus, and they actually just lose track. They're not going to the dentist. They're not seeing someone on, on a professional level at any reg irregularity as far as there's no regularity to it. And okay. so they just don't know. They, okay. they really are not educated that that denture can actually be tied down to something. All right. And then you have a patient that uh, is uh, uh, literally wearing uh, a partial or has teeth uh, missing at least six or more teeth a lot of times, and they're headed toward that. And they've had a lot of bad experiences. They've had a lot of root canals, they've had crowns, and they're back and forth going to the dentist. And they're really just fed up with it between the experiences, the cost, and the pain that they've gone through, uh, they just, uh, once they get their teeth out, they just don't want everyone to show they up again. They don't go back. Not at all. They're, they're just, uh, wash their hands of it. This is enough. You say when they get this done, like you take somebody wearing a denture and now you give them a brand new set of teeth that don't come out, you say it's life changing. Absolutely. Or they say it's life changing. It's life changing because can you imagine uh, uh, walking around uh, with a loose denture or, and all of a sudden now it's fixed and I can actually smile and eat and do anything I want? I tell patients, Randy, when they come see me, a denture is like a saddle on the horse's back without the strap. It's all over the place. Randy, okay. have you ever ridden a horse before? Yes, I have. Was it very fun? Uh, well, for me, no, I was a little scared, but if it wasn't strapped on that saddle, it would make it even worse. Would you have got on the horse if it wasn't Probably strapped not. down? No. Would you get on a bunking bull or, or a, a mechanical bull without no. that strap? So why would you ever go walking around with the denture with it not being tied down to anything? It's the same con concept. Patients with a lower denture have three mobile entities. The, the denture is literally floating around. It has three different things that are moving. Your jaw's moving, your joint, your lip, and your tongue. All three are mobile, and sending that thing up in the air and moving around, shifting around. So people have to learn to coordinate that just to eat and speak and even uh, enjoy a social event if, if that's the scenario that they're in. So it's a very difficult world living with dentures. I know a couple of dentures. They never complain. Are you saying there's no such thing as a happy dentureware? Of course not, Randy. They're not going to complain to you. I'm a dentist. Okay, okay, okay. They're going to come complain about everything to me. They're not going to tell you that they have sore spots or they have a numb lip or having trouble chewing and eating. They're not going to tell you that. But when they come see me, they open up and start sharing their, their Ill ailments and the problems that they're having with dentures. So at your center, my understanding, knowing you're coming in here today, that how dental implants are typically done, correct me if I'm wrong, you go to one place where they do the imaging, maybe another place where the surgeon does the implants, and you go to somebody else where they put the teeth on top, at your center, you kind of do it all right there, like a team approach. Absolutely, That's a, you hit it on the, on the nail on the head as far as a team approach. With our particular center, uh, we think that using the team approach, we can give you the best design, the best function, and the best outcome, minimizing the number of trips, the amount of surgery, the length of recovery, everything's balled up and a little bit cleaner and tighter than if you went to multiple different because places. Because you told me what you could do what takes other guys like nine months, you could do in just a few visits. Absolutely. At this point, because we can, of your system? Because of our system and, and our experts. How old can you be to do this, to get new teeth supported by implants? There's not a set limit to when can you uh, stop placing implants. Our, our, our whole um, philosophy is if you can walk, if you can talk on the phone and you can mend a wound, you can have an implant. 
Okay. It's that simple. It really is. I mean, could criteria. you be 85, 90 years old and get this done? Age doesn't have a, a bearing on it because I've had a week where literally operating average age, Randy, was 45, or excuse me, was 95 years of age. I literally operated. Why would six, a 95 year old want to do this? They have all their teeth in their mouth and uh, at one time and they're losing them and they don't want to go to the gray with, without uh, wearing a denture. They don't want to be wearing that denture. They want to have fixed teeth so they can smile. They're rambunctious. They're outgoing. They're engaging in their family and they don't want anything that they have to remove. They don't want to be seen like that, Randy. They don't want to go to their grave like that. And so there, there's a lot of pride. Some Can you eat whatever you want once you're all healed up? I mean, like a 90 year old could eat like carrots and broccoli and chewy things? They can eat uh, corn on the cob, they can eat ribs, they can eat chicken. Do they tell you these stories? That you're absolutely, that, I, that's the first thing when they come back and they talk to me about, hey, dog, guess what I'm eating today? I say, what is it? You know, they're, they're, they have a little pep in their step, they're excited to be there. And, and, and along with their, their spouse coming with them, they're all excited, not just the patient, because there's a big change in these people. Even at 95 or 98 years old, the oldest patient I've ever placed an implant was 100 years old. Oh my goodness. And, and that lady was as vibrant as you can imagine. So 100 years old, that's, that, I mean, were you a little scared when you were doing that on a 100 year old? Hey, anytime you, you operate on someone that's in their 80s and 90s, you always raises up that antenna that you're, you're more aware and more alert, just uh, when you have a healthy 100 year old, you're like, how can that be? But in this day and time, it's just one less thing that they have to think about. Pay, taking that denture in and out, hand it over to the caregiver and, and the things like this, they, that's just one less thing they have to concentrate on and think about in life. And they can just go on living the life and eating the cucumbers and the things they want to eat in life. Now, at, at your center, you, you offer, you know, somewhat of a warranty on mm -hmm. these. As long as they get their teeth cleaned, you're going to guarantee your work. Randy, in our center, we have a dedicated hygienist that is trained in the most state-of-the-art way to maintain these, um, these teeth that are sitting on top of these implants. Uh, just like anything, if, if you don't take care of it, it's going to fall out eventually. So okay. same thing with this. Uh, y y there's a reason why you, they came to see me in the first place. There, there's so they can last just like regular teeth. If you take care of them, they could last forever. Should. In fact, people who have periodontal disease or gum disease actually do better with dental implants. But uh, they tend to be more aggressive and more thoughtful about trying to maintain things. But the thing we learned in the late 90s was that there's a lot of genetic predisposition to cavities and gum disease, which are oftentimes independent. Some patients actually have, all, have both. It's not a, a, a neglect issue on the majority of our patients that we're seeing, but it's more of a, uh, there's a lot of genetic problems. So it's like a bacterial infection. They have foul odors, foul taste, and, and, and uh, just problems with pain and discomfort from but, bleeding. But if you have bad gums, can your gums be too bad? You can't get implants? They won't stay in there? No, that's not a, an accurate statement. You can even have really bad gums and still actually do better with the implants. One thing about implants is that it's uh, the way we're putting these uh, teeth on top of uh, these implants, it's like a chair. You wouldn't put all your legs in one corner and, and unlike your set of teeth, they're all lined up back to back to back. On these cases, they're not back to back. They're not, they're spread out. There's typically only four implants. Okay. And there are in four cases, implants for a full set of teeth. For a full set of okay. teeth. In case we have to put in six, depending on the size of the person, their ability to chew and, and eat certain foods and what we think their bone density is, which helps guide us to tell us how, much in, how many implants to place. Now you placed implants in the 90s, you said. Yes. Really? I didn't, they were around back then. They were around back then. You told me were, I didn't know what I was doing back then. We didn't know where the crowns need to go, but we sure knew where the implants need to go. But we, we had fun doing it. We, we really didn't understand a lot of the, the, the way the, the implant uh, interface with the crown, but now the ch things have changed dramatically now. We understand a lot more Is now. there a big learning curve? Because a lot of guys, look, a lot of guys call us to be on the program with very little experience. They're, they're kind of breaking into the business, so to speak. And you teach other doctors. And I think you told me in the green room, that's kind of scary. I, I'm paraphrasing you. But experience matters in this case. Absolutely. Um, what really scares me the most is uh, if you were to go to a neurosurgeon, you wouldn't want to have him cutting on your brain or your, your skull and only having three or four years experience. Experience is everything. Okay. It, when I say it makes me a little scared is a lot of times dentists and in some young surgeons, they don't really understand bone fully. You have to have problems or complications to be able to fully understand okay. what a human body can go through and, what, and the complications that you can encounter and how to deal with the potential complications. And this is your training as an oral surgeon? Yes, sir. Does it cost more though to go to an oral surgeon? No, that's, Randy, <laughs> Randy, that, that's a fallacy. A lot okay. of people think just because we're specialists means that things are gonna cost more, but that's not a true statement. 
um, anytime you do something correctly, it's going to save you a lot of money in the future. So. Okay. Now you brought some photos. What are we looking at? Well, the first case I want to present to you, Randy, this is Melissa. All right. Melissa is a, a really exciting case. She's a really quite pleasant lady, came in with her husband uh, with a chief complaint that her face was actually shrinking in and that her smile was just not what it used to be. And she had, uh, came to us at 42 years of age as a referral from her dentist who just wasn't sure what to do. But was she under, wearing a denture? She was wearing a denture, had been okay. a denture for about 10 or 12 years at this point. And she went to her dentist and just, hey, these dentures are not staying in my mouth. What can I do about it? And the dentist subsequently referred the patient to us where I got to, to meet her and her husband. And their complaint together was, hey, my face is starting to cave in. Kind of sinks in, why, why? Yeah. Because of the bone is starting to go away or what? Yeah. With time, anything that it's ill-fitting, it causes the bone to resorb. It's micro trauma, but over time, especially in women who have a propensity toward osteoporosis, the jawbone typically shrinks a little bit more than the typical patient. When we remove teeth, Randy, the average patient loses roughly about 23% shrinkage within the first four to six months. And there are new data that supports that even up to 52% shrinkage in that same amount of time. But over time, uh, when you have an ill-fitting denture, it compounds it and they lose even more bone. Well, that loss of bone causes the face to kind of cave in. In her particular case, the face was starting to cave in, All right. but her smile was starting to, to sag. Her teeth actually had what we call reverse smile. And Randy, as she comes in that morning for surgery, she comes in with a, a smile that's reversed with a flopping denture. She walks out that same day with a gorgeous smile as you see right here. And with this smile, if you look carefully, this was all by design. If you look at the corners of her mouth, she, her teeth fill up her smile in the buccal corridor, which is that little black triangle that we have in the corner of our mouth. The sides of the mouth. Okay. The sides of the mouth. They disappear. She has a very broad, beautiful smile. But that's by design, Randy. That didn't just happen. Okay. We, our whole team, uh, between the restorative doctor, the me as an oral surgeon, and then the uh, lab technician who uh, we use is really one of the most brilliant guys, allows us to pr digital print multiple different smiles. And we can actually try those in and, and see which ones we like the best at the time of surgery. If we don't like something, we can change it out right then. So this is all by design. If you look carefully, Randy, if you look at her midlines, look at the, the feminine nature of those teeth and the shape of the curves of the, the two front teeth, this would look very good on a male. We're doing this because this okay. is a female. It's a feminine smile. It's a feminine smile. I wouldn't put this on you, Randy. So it's kind of custom. Correct. For the, for the person. It's, it's customized specifically for her. And she can eat whatever she wants. She can eat steaks. She can eat uh, chicken. She can eat uh, chicken on the bone, with the bone, or ribs, cucumbers, salad. And when she looks at the mirror for the first time, like, what do they say? Randy, probably, this is probably the most I impressive thing about all that we do is that these patients, to watch their spouse and them for the first time look in that mirror and just literally just melt. Uh, it's shocking how uh, this changes the life of the patient, but even our staff, Randy. You get choked up, the staff? We, we get choked up, we get start teary-eyed. We have to start handing out Kleenexes uh, at this point because we're having a salt party because we're so excited for our patient that everything they dreamed of, they're getting in a single day, Randy just in a single day. So no they more can, dentures. No more dentures. Can you no wipe them out in Oklahoma? Are there even enough people to handle? Like you said, there are tens of thousands of people working up for a lower denture. If yeah. they all figured it out, not enough guys to even do it. Well, we'd, we'd, we'll take on their, call, their consultation and see them and, and, and uh, schedule them. It's about the best we could probably do for them is just get them scheduled and get them in there and, and talk about it and get them moving forward. Okay, good. Now you have more photos. What else? Well, this next case here, Randy, this is Jamie. Okay. You remember earlier we were talking about there's different types of patients that come see us? There's the pain patient is one of the patients. Uh, she was our pain, uh, the one that's in pain and just fed up with going to the dentist and having a lot of discomfort her whole life. She was in a, a dentist that was a little bit older and she had gone into him for one, pa one tooth would go bad, have a crown, root canal, the whole works, and it's, it ended up abscessing, the tooth had to be removed. Then another tooth would do it. She back and forth. She developed a fear of going to the dentist during this time. And her, and her dentist said, don't do anything about it other than putting these floppy dentures in there. So it came to, to be that the dentist retired. Her new dentist said, hey, there's Dr. Brooks. He knows and, and understands that we can maybe give you a different uh, feature or another like option. Like a new set of teeth. A new set of teeth. There's other options than, than messing around with these teeth that are failing. Another young person wearing a denture. Interesting. And this is one thing she really didn't want to do, but she had a, a, a big fear. 
Uh, fear's a big deal in dentistry. This particular patient, I had to go out into the, the car lot of our, our parking lot of our, um, our clinic just to see her for the very first time, right? just to introduce myself. Uh, and fear, a lot of people don't uh, know that there's multiple options for fear because that's a big part of dentistry is that people have a fear. That's one of the reasons they won't come see me because of fear. But on these patients, we can pre-medicate them the night before, the morning of surgery. So the night before, give them a pill? Absolutely. So they can sleep good? Yes, sir. Then the morning. And then when they get there, we All put right. them on a mask, they fall asleep, and presto, they have the most beautiful smile. We put them on gas. We didn't start the IV. We put them on the gas first. Oh, that's they, nice. fell, they fell asleep with the gas. Then we started the IV. Then they went to sleep for the surgery and woke up with a beautiful smile. And they have very little memory sometimes have, of this? They actually don't remember the night before oftentimes with some of these medications. That's why we have them sign their consent and do all the, the, the work they need to do ahead of time. We actually do it uh, okay. the day before. So she was headed toward dentures and there's no way that was gonna happen. And her teeth were failing and she came in that morning, we took the teeth out, removed them and replace them with a beautiful uh, set of teeth that are not removable and they're permanent. Now she can eat anything she likes. And Randy, uh, just to kind of go through with what I was showing you on this particular patient, this is her about two or three months later. She's just smiling, giggling and having a great time. Very For nice. the first time in literally about 10 years, she's just having a great time. She's socializing now. She's going out with her husband. She's not afraid to come see me now. And in fact, when she comes in the office, she has a pep in her step. And <laughs> okay. The girls don't even know who she is when she walks in. They're like, who is this young lady? Because she now is greeting everybody. She's going up to people and she's excited to be living again and excited to be eating and socializing. So it's a big boost in self-confidence. It's a major boost in confidence. Now, now you're an oral surgeon, so you probably think like the teeth are the most important thing. How important are they? is a smile in your opinion? Randy, this is the most important as you, a lot of people would say that. Teeth are very important, just not only socially, if I'm going out bowling and, and I'm worried about my teeth falling out, I'm going to be hiding everything from my friends if we want to go out and get a, a beer or, or go get some food afterwards. Uh, oftentimes I get a little nervous, or they get nervous rather. In fact, Randy, with uh, if self-esteem issues, this really has a big problem with it. When you don't have teeth, that's a major problem. You look at Hollywood, for instance, back in the time when you and I were growing up in the 60s and watching cartoons, if we wanted to make someone look dumb, we gave them buck teeth. Yeah, or other okay. In other cases, literally, we would remove a tooth. If we wanted to make him a villain. Black out the front tooth. We'd black out the black tooth. So psychologically, this is a big deal. Self-esteem is a major component. If you don't like your teeth, then we can change that. We can make them fix where they're not removable. So no more dentures. No more dentures. Not in your office. Not in our office, for sure. No way. So you have more photos. What else are we looking at? Well, the next case, this is Brent. And okay. Brent came to me through kind of a chain of events. He went to his orthodontist going to them so he could try to get his perfect smile that he's been dreaming his whole life. Now, Brent is a very vibrant person. He's in management level, gives a lot of presentation and lectures, and he just wanted to get a little bit more to show. Well, he went to the orthodontist. After six years, they realized, wait a second, we're not exactly where we want to be. Now, if you look so carefully- So when he smiles, his teeth were not showing. Correct. And now, okay. if you look at this, if these uh, photographs, if you look closely, see how flat those teeth are yeah, and how square yeah, they look? Yeah. Those are very uh, uh, worn out looking teeth. They look very old. They look uh, uh, chipped and, and worn. And this is one thing he wanted to correct. And then we okay. got the opportunity to tell him about multiple options we had for him to give him his uh, perfect smile. Because that's what he wanted all along, Randy. He wanted a perfect smile. And we could do this in a day. And he, So his option would have been a denture. His option, only option was a denture. Was a denture. Because at this point, there's nothing to bridge to. These teeth were mobile, there was gum okay. disease. And his only option, it was terminal at this point. Uh, to get where he wanted to be and where we wanted to give him the, the dream smile, uh, we did this from scratch. We put our team together, came up with the perfect smile. And look, Randy, this is what we ended up with. Look <laughs> at those nice. teeth. Very nice. Those are gorgeous. This was probably one of the funnest times that we had giving a mirror to someone. We handed him the, the mirror. He got out of that chair and gave me a big hug and started crying. Because this nice. is what he wanted, Randy. He, 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 when he went to the orthodontist six years ago, that's what he wanted. And now uh, he's got the perfect smile. So what do they like? Does a guy like this like the way it looks? Or does he like what he could eat with, with teeth that don't come out? 
Well, the bonus from the way they look is the function. I don't think he realized uh, he had to start practicing how to smile and eat again because this was all new. Now he's got back teeth that he didn't have before. Okay. So he's able to eat foods that he wasn't able to eat before. He's actually grinding and chewing food instead of just dicing it like a lot of people do with their front teeth. And now it's changed his life. He and his wife couldn't be more happy. And Randy, here's Kathy. Kathy came to us from one of our, our, our uh, cosmetic uh, dentists that helped us restore this case. Kathy was one of the people who would always frown. She, she always covered up her smile. Every time I saw her, she would always look a little bit down and tend to cover up her smile. Now those teeth are pretty bad. Is that unusual? No, Randy, this is actually pretty common. Uh, the problem is you just don't ever get to see these people because they're, they don't get out and about. They, or they don't, don't smile. They don't smile. They tend to cover it up and they tend to be bashful and, and introverted okay. and recluse. A lot of times these patients become more isolated and they really don't come out of the shell because of the, the problem of their teeth. They, they're not able to smile. They're not happy. They're not comfortable. Even amongst their own family members, they won't even uh, really uh, like smile. They don't smile in photos, things like that. They won't smile in photos at, at, at family events, Christmas time, Thanksgiving. These type of times of year, they just kind of just give you mums the word. So here we have teeth that are terminal. And so no way she wanted to go into a denture. And so this was the option. She came into us one day and about three or four hours later, this is what she looks like, Randy. Very nice, very nice, she looks happy. Time for like one or two more because we're short on time. We have a couple of minutes left. Randy, this is a, a, a professional. Here's All a right. person who uh, genetically, and you remember we talked about genetics earlier. She's had a lot of problems with her teeth to the point where she really didn't like going to the dentist that much, even though she had great experiences, but it was one after another after no another of losing teeth from one reason or another. You know, Randy, again, she had options. She could walk out with a denture or she can have something fixed. And of course she chose something that she didn't want to remove. And so here's what we have. And you can see the beautiful smile she has there. Yeah, very nice, very nice. And, and you say they want to give you a hug sometimes. Nothing else in oral surgery do they want to give you a hug, except for when you want to give, when you give somebody their teeth back. Hey, when you give patients great drugs and they feel great, all of them want to hug you, but especially the ones who after you replace their teeth from never being able to see their teeth to seeing them all in one day, that's a big shock to them. And you bet they stand up and want to give you the biggest hug ever. Randy, let me show you Marty. Okay. Marty is a, just an incredible human being. M Marty is uh, just a big old teddy bear. He's about six foot four. And all he ever wanted was a pretty and good smile and eat whatever he wanted. And we took a case where he was headed to a denture, and that was really his only option, and turned it into a case where you can see here, it looks beautiful. And now he can, wow. eat, he can eat anything he wants with this. He's not limited. He can eat, uh, his favorite meal is a steak, and he can go back to eating steaks. And so once they're healed up, I mean, are they still like a little worried about biting into things like a steak? Well, after- Did they ever call you and say, Doc, are you sure it's okay for me to eat? Well, depending if they didn't have, if they had dentures before, so they're very timid because they don't even know what it's like to eat again. Because when you lose your teeth, you lose 80% of your chewing capability when you go to dentures, Randy. Okay, okay. And so they don't know what it's like to chew again. So their muscle memory has been lost because their coordination is different. Then when you put something fixed in there, it's a totally different uh, game at this point. So yes, they're very timid on chewing the, the first foods when we give them that fixed product. So you could remove the teeth in the same day, give them a new set of teeth supported by implants, again, in the same afternoon. They have IV sedation, they don't even remember things. They get a ride home and then they go, and they even forget that they had it done. That's is, that, the, is that true? That is the, the, the truth, Randy. We see this on a daily, if not weekly basis. So pain is not some, like a big, because it seems so painful, but it's not like a big thing that they complain about? Not at all. If you take this particular patient I have over here. Let's take a look. This is a woman, 85 years of age, had her both upper and lower. She had a dry mouth. And she was terminal at that point. She had cavities when on When you say teeth. terminal, what do you mean? Like she, you cannot save those teeth? It, it'd be very cost prohibitive and it would break down. So okay. either way, even if you restore it, it's gonna break down too. When you have a dry mouth, there are a lot of the bacteria and the, the, the have foul taste, odors, and pain because these teeth keep breaking down because of the moisture is perfect for bacteria to go crazy. It's dry, but it's moist, so okay. bacteria take over. So she was terminal. The teeth were gonna need to be removed at some point. So we elected to do a little bit earlier. The unique thing about her is she had a, a heart attack about a year and a half prior to this. So we got clearance from her cardiologist and literally a day after she calls, Dr. Brooks, this can't be true. I don't have any pain. And then right. on follow-up, that's, that's only 24 hours after surgery. She literally came back for a follow-up visit with her husband 
smiling for the first time because she's been hiding these broken down teeth for the last year or so until she could get this all corrected. And she said, I never had any pain. She said, I had all my teeth, all uh, 30 teeth removed from upper and lower jaw. And I didn't have any pain. But Randy, that's not with every case. I mean, for the most part, patients have very little pain with this. And they have a lot less bruising and swelling because we're using PRP or platelet-rich plasma. We draw that up after their sleep because remember they had the, okay. the sedation the night before and the morning of and, and then we gas them down. They wake up very numb and they have all this platelet-rich plasma, which is an anti- -plasma. Helps them heal faster? Helps them heal faster. It helps reduce the swelling, helps reduce the bruising, and, and it's a pain reliever. So there's multiple different benefits from PRP. Okay. Now, dental insurance doesn't really, only covers a very small portion, even if you have great insurance. Medicare, Medicaid doesn't cover this at all. But we have financing, Randy. We have two people in place to help cover that, that can come in and if you have good credit. Like decent credit, you can, there's decent, lenders that'll finance this. If you have decent credit, and, uh, that shouldn't be an option. Like every week people are doing this, financing it? Weekly. Is that right? Yes. So now there's no more excuses. Yeah. Doesn't really hurt, right? You got sedation. You could be 100 years old and do this. Randy, I have cases where we literally uh, plan for that. Someone's so worried about the post-operative, we just plan, okay, we'll give you medication. Here's how you take the medication to make sure you're comfortable for okay. the next two or three days. Now, I, I had to ask you this. If somebody's been wearing a denture like 15 years, you can't do this, get a new teeth supported by implant, not enough bone. Is that true? That's, that would be the case if they were in a general dentist's office where they don't have the capability or, or the means to be able to do a, a more advanced case of reconstructing either by using uh, zygomatic implants or more advanced techniques when there's no bone. We have other options. So uh, still can be done in this one day type of situation? Can still be uh, not only place the implants, but the, the, the bridge can be put on top of it the same day and they walk out with fixed And we are out of time, but final message. Somebody watching this, they're in the two big categories the loose teeth, bad breath, you know, gum disease. Mm -hmm. they're, gonna, they're headed to dentures. And then the denture wearers, they're watching this. Maybe they've heard what you say, but they're still afraid or skeptical. What do you say to them? We tell them, just come on in and see us because we have a free consultation. We have a, a x-ray or three-dimensional x-ray that we provide for free. We take photos and we're gonna offer financing. Okay, good. So if somebody's watching this now, they're wearing a denture mm -hmm. or they have a mouthful of teeth that have to be extracted. If everything works out right, how soon could they have their new teeth? Like in three weeks from today? Randy, we can do it that day. In fact, Randy, if you were walking through here and you tripped and you broke your teeth out, we can actually make a slip on smile today. So we have the team that literally, if, if you lost your teeth and you were, had nothing to eat or drink, we could take you back to surgery and do it today if we really wanted to. So, okay, but, but so somebody watching this, two weeks from now they have a new teeth that don't come out. And that's two weeks, totally feasible. Very much so. And, and we, that's uh, probably a high percentage of our cases walk out with fixed teeth. Okay, good. I want to thank you so much. So if they want to know more, they go to your website, look at some of the before and afters, and then just make an appointment. We'd love to have them. Okay, good. Thanks for coming on the program. Thank you, Randy. You've been watching The Wellness Hour, news that makes you healthier. I'm Randy Alvarez. For now, I wish you could help. Thanks for watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez, the authority on health issues.